and we're talking about uh, drilling down into insurance. And you mentioned that people are, in, in, I think it was 90% underinsured. Is that correct? It's around 90%, yes. So how would you define underinsured? Underinsured. Well, a lot of people will have a little bit of their insurance uh, their debt covered, or mm-hmm. they'll have group plans at work where they'll get one year's worth of their salary. Some have two. And the reality of it is if you pass away, you need your debt paid off if you've got a family and children. But there's that income, too, that that person has yeah. and if you lose that. I think so that's the biggest piece. The biggest piece is the income. And, you know, we all have insurance on our cars, our phones and stuff like that. But we forget that to pay for all that stuff, there's an actual human being there creating revenue. Making money. And, and if that person suddenly disappears, how do you mm-hmm. feed the family? How do you pay for the kids? How do you pay for education? How do you pay the mortgage payment? How do you pay the car payments? Mm-hmm. You know, it's great to have your house paid off with credit or insurance. You still got to eat. Yeah. You know, drywall doesn't taste very good. I used to yeah. be I used to be a drywaller, so I know it doesn't mm-hmm. taste very good. And so we, we need to ensure the revenue that's right. coming in, the mm-hmm. golden goose. Yeah. And, we, and we don't do that. And people are way underinsured. They're not buying nearly as much as they... They really should. Well, and, and we always talk about life. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, I think the other thing is, and I get these calls from consumers. They call me and ask if they take disability. Mm-hmm. And I find from us at, anyway, such a small percentage of our consumers take the disability yep. because people don't know, think it's going to happen. To they them. don't think it's going to happen to them. Right. It's an extra cost. Yep. And, you know, they're just so focused, like life, 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 mm-hmm. if yeah. they're taking coverage. Yeah. But the number one call that, that I get is for people getting disabled. Yeah. It's either they've had a health issue yeah. or they've had an accident. And we're not talking like they're permanently disabled. People are, you know, they're being disabled for 6, 12, 24 months. It's mm-hmm. shorter term disabilities that yeah. we're getting the calls on. And so many people, we have to tell them to be like, you waive that coverage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if for Dan, yeah. maybe you can speak to well, it. Well, like- I mean, Dan, it's like somebody, the, the analogy that I once, that, and I'm sure you've heard it, all these all the analogies being in the business that you're in, but if you had a machine that was printing money in your basement and um, it was printing a certain amount of money and that was covering your bills and it cost you $50 a month to insure that machine, you wouldn't think twice about it, right? You wouldn't think twice. You wouldn't think twice. Yet, if, what, that is what you are as the revenue generator for your family. Why would you not spend 50, 75 bucks a month to insure yourself if you cannot work, right? Right. But people, people see it as a cost. And yeah. today's economy, people are tight. And generally, insurance is one of the first things that goes. Yeah. And next thing you know, they don't want to give up the Netflix. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yeah. And, and then yeah. something happens, and then, then what happens? You know, your family's sitting there going, what do I do? That's on death. Mm-hmm. Like Clinton says, what happens if you get into a car accident and you've hurt yourself? You might get EI. You can't work for, you know, yeah. six months or a yeah. year. Yeah. Your bills still come in. The creditors still mm-hmm. want their payments. Oh, last totally. time I checked, the bank doesn't let you get away from not paying your mortgage payment mm-hmm. or the car payment. Or the kids still want to eat something mm-hmm. at dinner. Yeah, and totally. if you don't have that revenue, what do you do? All right, so what's the process when it comes to uh, getting disability insurance uh, through a a licensed product? Well, simply you you come in or give us a call, and we do an application and figure out how much you earn. And then we can sure generally, again, up to 66 and a third percent of that Mm -hmm. because you get that tax-free. That'd be tax-free, right. right. Okay, got it. Uh, And we do the underwriting, and we put a claim in, and there's different types of products. You can get products that cover you to age 65 or just a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can get disability plans that just cover your And if you're going to 65 and you're 40, that your income would be indexed throughout, would it? In some policies, you can buy that rider for indexation, or some people just buy what they're making at the time. Right, Uh, right. There's also disability products that cover just debt, so... If you're disabled for a period of time, they'll cover all your debt payments Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for that period of time. So there's a lot of flexibility in there. The key is to come in and ask the questions and go through an actual analysis, see what you really need. What kind of costs are we talking a month here for a typical something like a disability fully underwritten product? It really depends on how old you are and how, how much, much you, make. you make. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. It's all but, um, but 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 people out there, I mean, are, are might be thinking, is this hundreds of dollars a month, or is it? But it's generally, I think, if you used if you use kind of a hundred dollars a month, I think most people could get a pretty damn good product, disability product for that. Could they oh, not? F- yes, you can get a fair bit of coverage there. A yeah. hundred dollars a month, we yeah. can get you covered. We might not get you the Cadillac of coverage, but we can get you coverage that will take care of the lion's share of your bills. Right. And a hundred bucks a month, like when, I mean, that's it, a couple. You, coffees people when you think about it that's nothing right 
Right. When you think about it, it's nothing. And I think people are tight, Todd. Like, we talk yeah. about this. We talk about interest rates. We talk about the cost of fuel and, like, groceries. People are tight. But it's it's so shocking to me sometimes what people, you know, let go first. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, I yeah. think things like insurance, that's, like, the, the last thing you need to not be paying. Mm-hmm. Or that's the last thing you should be canceling. It's mm-hmm. the first thing people let go. And it's the first thing they regret letting go. Right. Yeah. They get yeah. hurt. Dan, uh, before we run out of time, let me ask you this. Uh, when it comes to net worth, what somebody's worth, I mean, this is one of the first things you probably do is figure out what well, net about net worth. Is the home, and some would say that the that the that the residence is should be included in your net worth. Others say that it shouldn't be. What's your take on on that? It, it really depends on uh, what side of the tax bill you're on. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you pass away, your your primary residence is part of your net worth, and you can get probate on that. Uh, some people say your primary resident is not part of your net worth because you got to live somewhere. Right. The reality of it is, you know, with the way the markets have changed, people have a lot of net worth in their homes. It's so sometimes I believe their biggest that, asset. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a lot of value in people's homes. It's a huge part of my retirement plan, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if, if you have to look at it on how you're structuring it, if it's just a home that you're never going to move out of and – you know, you're not using the cash out of that asset, then it's not part of your net worth. But mm-hmm. if it's something you're going to create revenue stream from by using different mortgage products or lending products, then it is part of your net worth. Yeah. So it's really, it's kind of a two-sided coin there. What are your thoughts on it, Clinton? I think it's biggest asset in families, um, you know, home. Like the home is the biggest asset in their portfolio mm-hmm. in a number of cases. For me, I'm a little bit more agnostic that I use the home as an asset because I don't have the emotional attachment to the home. I think of it more of a house and it's an asset and people buy, sell and trade these so, so often. I think sometimes people will buy a home and they're going to keep it forever and they're going to pass this home down to their children. But I think the attitude has changed as the market obviously has changed. And so many people now are using leverage products like a mortgage or a home equity line of credit to stay in the home, but also potentially to supplement their income going into retirement. Yeah, that's one of the retirement plans that that a lot of people are looking at is using like a line of credit to supplement their income mm-hmm. that, you know, doesn't get paid off until you sell the house or you pass away. Mm-hmm. So you can use it that way. So if you're using it that way, it is certainly part of your net worth. But if it's just a home where you're not using it at, to supplement your income, mm-hmm. right. I don't really think it should fall in there. Okay. So when uh, when people are coming into your office, uh, they all get referred to Dan? Is that correct? Yeah, unless they don't want to you right. know, get that advice or get the second opinion. Every time that we have a mortgage that funds, uh, we offer the clients uh, the option to go and chat with Dan. And it's so, so important, I think, whether they take the credit insurance from us or not, to get a second opinion. Mm-hmm. Because I think um, so many people are you know, relying on you know, maybe just their day-to-day bank to give them financial advice or, you know, they're just, re- you know, relying on their mortgage broker. Really, we are focused on that mortgage and that mortgage debt and that home equity line of credit. We're not focused on all of the other things that are involved in people's net worth and protecting their net worth. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it's so important to sit down with someone. And, you know, the one reason I really like and, and enjoy dealing with Dan is, he has an access to such a variety of different products, but also different companies. So very similar to our business. And I think that's one of the reasons that we're so well aligned. Excellent. Any closing thoughts, Dan, before we uh, well, just let like you go? Clinton said there, I think the important thing is to go deal with somebody who has a variety of access, a broker mm-hmm. on, on the investment and insurance world. If you're going to a specific institution, generally – those employees have to sell the product, mm-hmm. whereas you're going to a licensed agent who's with a, an independent network like I am. We have access to the whole market, and we can pick and choose right. what's best for the client. So you want that non-biased. And you opinion. and you doing any drywalling on the side still, or is that over? Uh, just some home repairs. <laughs> just Love my it. own. Love it. <laughs> so you don't want us to give uh, your your card out, your business number out for drywalling? Not terms. at all. No. Nope. Just, just for the financial advice. Just the financial advice. <laughs> Love yes. it. Thanks for coming right. in, Dan. Th- yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for coming in.